Hello and welcome to the Total Entertainment Podcast with me, Paul Collis, and today we're going to be taking a look at Paramore whilst they're performing live at the Cardiff International Arena. Today is a seven co- is a seven truck show, and as you can tell, they're starting to sound check at the moment, which is good because they are well ahead of schedule. So, what do they have? So let's start off with the easy bit sound. They have line arrays stacked uh, two wide and 12 deep, and they've flown uh, some of the subs behind the first uh, behind the line arrays left, stage left, and stage right. You've also got two subs stage left and stage right on the floor, and an array of uh, front fills lying in the front of the stage and on top of the floor level subs. Set slightly back at 45 degrees, you've got a uh, line array for surround sound effect, which yet again is too wide and 12 deep, so they've completely balanced the sound that way, although I think that's a bit of a waste. Um, you also have a giant AV screen and a massive AD screen there at the back of the stage, which is pretty much the whole span of the stage and the full uh, height of from the ceiling down to stage level. Stage left and stage right, you have the uh, you have projection screens, which are linked in tandem with the uh, center screen. Although I would I would assume that at points they would go independent, so you have the cameras on stage left and stage right and visualizations on the uh, center screen. Lighting wise, you have three trusses. You, uh, front of house one is uh, LED profile units, which I believe could also be uh, Robo spots. I haven't checked what's going on backstage at the moment. And LX one and two are at profile units with a few wash units mixed into the fold. You have some LED strobe floods, and then you've also got some trusses that are at 45 degree angles, which come out from the upstage LX bar. And on that, you've got more profile units and a few LED spot units, and you also have another. Bar, another set of bars, stage left and stage right at 45 degrees to LX1. So it's looking interesting. Also, the, the stage is fully carpeted red. Yet again, another interesting choice. And you have some uh, moving lights on the floor, as we, uh, which are being put out as we speak. In front of the stage, you have two uh, confetti cannons. So yeah, it's going to look really good. And as you can tell, uh, they're very, they're running everything through the sound system. So we'll be back shortly. Paramore is an American rock band from Franklin, Tennessee, formed in 2004. The band currently consists of lead vocalist Haley Williams, guitarist Taylor York, and drummer Zach Farrow. Williams and Farrow are founding members of the group, while York, a high school friend of the original lineup, joined in 2007. The band signed to Fueled by Raymond a subsidiary of Atlantic Records, both owned by Warner Music Group. Williams was separately signed to Atlantic as she was scouted when she was a teenager, and they were the only label to let her stay in the band instead of going solo. But Atlantic said that the rest of the band had to sign to Fueled by Raymond. She is also the only member to appear on all six of Paramore's studio albums. The group released its debut album, all we know is falling in 2005 with the album reaching number four in uk rock charts in 2009 and number 30 on billboard's heat seekers chart in 2006 the band's second album riot was released in that in 2007 thanks to the success of the singles misery business crush 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 and that's what you get riots was a mainstream success and was certified platinum in the united states paramore then received a best new artist nomination at the 2008 grammy awards the 2009 follow-up brand new eyes is the band's second highest charting album to date landing at number two on billboard 200 with 175,000 first week sales. It produced the top 40 single, The Only Exception, and went platinum in Ireland and in the UK, as well as gold in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Following the departure of Josh and Zach 
Farrow in 2010. The band released a self-titled fourth album in 2013. It gave the band the first number one in US Billboard 200 and was also number one in album in the United Kingdom, Ireland, Australia and New Zealand, Brazil, Argentina and Mexico. It includes singles Still To You and Ain't It Fun, with the latter winning a Grammy Award for the Best Rock Song for Williams and York as songwriters, making it Paramore's first Grammy Award win. The band's lineup changed once again after the album cycle, with bassist Jeremy Davis leaving the band near the end of, tw- of near the end of 2015, and former dr- and former drummer Zach Farrow rejoining the band in 2017. The fifth and sixth studio albums, After Laughter and This Is Why, are were released in May 2017 and February 2023, respectively, to critical acclaim. Paramore's music style has generally been regarded as pop, punk, emo, punk rock, alternative rock, power pop, emo pop, new wave, punk rock, pop grunge, electro pop and synth pop. Joshua Martin had written after an interview with Hayley Williams, the band isn't just a short pop punk girl with her red hair and spiky attitude. Their music is like them. It is, it's aged differently. It's sped... It's sped up, slowed down, it's emo without being whiny or bratty. Almost a very literal anti-Avril Lavigne. Alternative Press Magazine had commented that the band was young sounding whilst consistently being honest. Paramore's first album, All We Know Is Fallen, had an arguably more formulatic pop punk sound that was delivered particularly well. The combination of the two had created a refined rock infused pop punk album. The band's second release, Riot, was said to explore a diverse range of styles, however, not straying far from their signature sound. The band's later albums, such as Paramore and After Laughter, included more of a new wave and synth pop sound. Alternative Press and various other reviewers have noted that the band's stage performances have helped them boost to a larger fame. Alternative Press states that Williams is more charisma than singers twice her age and her band aren't that far behind in their chops either. Singer-songwriter John Mayer and praised Williams' voice in a blog in October 2007, calling her the Great Orange Hope, orange in reference to her hair colour. Due to the female-fronted aspect of the band, Paramore has gained comparisons to Kelly Clarkson and the aforementioned Avril Lavigne, to which one reviewer said was sorely unfounded. Reviewer Jonathan Bradley noted that Paramore attacks its music with infectious enthusiasm. However, he also explained that there isn't a whole lot of difference between Riot and the songs from Kelly Clarkson or Avril Lavigne. A reviewer at NME had likened Paramore's sound to that of No Doubt, stripped of all the scar bollocks, and Kelly Clarkson's, wild, and Kelly Clarkson's wildest dreams. Hayley Williams has gone on to comment about the female aspect of the band, saying that Paramore is not this girl fronted band it makes music for people who enjoy music not so people can talk about my sexuality okay so now we've heard a bit about paramore let's take a look at their supporting artists right so let's take a look at what we can find about rosie plain rosie plain was born rosalind Leyden in winchester england in 1986 in 19 in 2006 she moved to bristol to study arts and she participated in the cleaner records group there she recorded two records published by King Karost's Fence Records inside Inside Over Here in 2008 and joined Sometimes Unjoined in 2012. In 2012 she moved to London. In November 2012 she recorded a live session for Lauren Levine's BBC Radio 6 music show. In 2015 Flame released a new album Friend followed by Followed in 2016 by a companion album of remixes, unreleased tracks and radio sessions, Friend of a Friend. In 2019 she released What a Boost, What a Boost and in 2020 What a Remix. She's a member of This Is The Kit and regularly contributes to the music of her friends including Rachel Dad, Francois and the Atlas Mountains and Bamboo with whom she has performed live on a number of occasions in 2016. Thane has toured with the likes of Deven, Devendra Banhart and Katie Tunstall, as well as performed at, as well as performing at Green Man Festival and End of the Road Festival. Her discography is Inside Over Here in 2008, Joined Sometimes Unjoined Fence Records in 2012, Friend Lost Map Records in 2015, 
Friend of a Friend, Lost Matt Records 2016, What a Boost, Memphis Industries 2019, What a Remix in 2020, and Prize in 2023. Block Party, an English rock band composed of Ely Okoki on lead vocals, rhythm guitar, keyboards and sampler, Russell Lissack on lead guitar, keyboards, Justin Harris bass guitar, keyboard, saxophones, backing vocals, and Louise Bartle on drums, percussion. Four members are Matt Tong and Gordon Mokes, who left the band in 2013 and 2015 respectively. Their brand of music, whilst rooted in rock, retains elements of other genres such as electronica and house music. The band was formed at the 1999 Reading Festival by Okaki and Lissak and went through a variety of names before settling on before settling on Block Party in 2003. Mike's joined the band after answering an advert in Enemy magazine, whilst Tom was picked via an audition. Block Party got their break by giving BBC Radio One DJ Steve Lamarck and Franz Ferdinand's lead singer Alex Capranos a copy of the demo She's Hearing Voices. In February 2005, the band released a debut album, Silent Alarm, which was critically acclaimed and was named Indie Album of the Year in 2006, Plug Awards, and Enemy Album of the Year for both, which both honour indie music. That year, the record was also certified platinum in Britain and the band built on this success in 2007 with with the release of their second studio album A Weekend in the City which reached a peak of number two in UK albums charts and number 12 on the Billboard 200. In August 2008 Block Party released their third studio record Intimacy which entered the UK albums charts at number eight and number 18 on the Billboard 200. The band went on hiatus in October 2009 to focus on side projects they reunited in September 2011 and shortly thereafter released their fourth album, Four, which entered the UK Albums Chart at number three. In 2013, Block Party released their third EP titled Next Wave Sessions. In August, the band then began an indefinite hiatus to continue with their respective side projects. The band's fifth studio album, Hymns, was the first to involve Harris and Bartle was released in to, in, on the 29th of January 2016. The sixth studio album, Alpha Games, was released on the 29th of April in 2022. Block Party have sold over 3 million albums worldwide. Right, so now we've heard about the bands and now we've seen about the setup. Let's get on to the actual show reports. So, Rosie Plain. Well, from start to finish, Rosie Plain had a uh, state had a static wash of lights via the LX1 profile units backlighting her. The lights were at focus into a narrow beam and had a breakup gobo in every song. And every song had a different colour combination and sometimes they uh, mixed it up with a uh, slight chase which was in time to the uh, actual beat. Sound wise, it wasn't loud, but we had crisp clarity. We had the 22 carats gold standard of clarity, and it was a nice, beautiful mix there, which um, just had a real good sound to it. Fully in depth, full bodied, and you could hear every instrument and vocal perfectly. I thought that Rosie Plain was a unique artist. I mean, You'd find it hard to find a similar artist with uh, upbeat and trippy music. Well, one could even go as far as saying that her unique style was a little bit lo-fi, deliberately lo-fi, and it just had a nice sound to it. Really, really pleasing to the ears, and uh, no one else, no other, no other artist that I've ever heard would come close to that weird, weird but soothing sound that she had i thoroughly enjoyed it and i also would would like to think that you'd hear uh, a lot of um ra- that you'd hear a lot of rosy plain on uh, no sleep radio you know something that'll help chill you out so you'd come back from work late late at night you put some uh, chilled out beats on to help settle you down switch your brain off from the from a long night working if you're do if you're working nights that is and it and her music was just nice you could definitely definitely shut down you shut down your brain with that nice nice sound that she had come out with i mean even if you were uh, and even if you were, were at home and you couldn't sleep and you're reading your book at night in bed Rosie Plain would be nice to uh, just listen to whilst you're reading. 
or even studying to as well. And I also I also felt that the audience received Rosie playing very well, very well. They were clapping, they were applauding. They some were some people were dancing along to it. And I would guarantee you that m not many people would have heard much about Rosie Plain until tonight. And they all they all enjoyed her. And I also feel like this isn't the last time we've heard from Rosie Plain. Now, Block Party. They had a few more lights than Rosie Plain. This is because they needed them for their high energetic sets and high octane set. And they had use of uh, all the LED profiles on LX1 and uh, 2, as well as the front of house uh, profiles. They also had some uh, LED truss trims on LX1 as well. So every song used the same lights with different colour combinations and different chase patterns, which were perfectly timed to the music. Sometimes they were uh, ballyhooing into the audience, sometimes they were just making shapes on the stage. But it was great. It was nice to look, look at. It was nice to look at and this was organised flash and trash. It wasn't random. It was all pre-planned, programmed perfectly and it looked great. Now sound wise, Block Party were louder than Rosie Plain and the sound engineer managed to maintain a 22 karat clarity with extra crispness to uh, add more body to the sound and it was amazing sound you couldn't ask for a better sound engineer in my opinion he did his job perfectly and it sounded great it's definitely CD quality and on a live performance as I said already Block Party had an amazing uh, an energetic performance and this rubbed off on the audience as there were lots of people dancing and bouncing in time to the tunes after every song they had a huge applause and scream especially when they played their biggest numbers. Block Party did very well and I would pay money to see them headline their own tour because they were amazing and this is the first time I've actually heard a Block Party song and uh, they were great to listen to and they were great to watch and I would definitely add them onto my summer barbecue uh, playlist. They were great and I definitely, definitely want to see and hear more of Block Party. So Paramore, the intro started up with some spill and a shiny sparkling orb. Or it could have been a star but it looked more orb like, starting off small in the middle of the uh, centre screen and as the uh, as the intro, uh, as the intro vox went, got more intense, the uh, orb got bigger and bigger and bigger. Then suddenly, it just, the screen went black. The light, stage lights went black, and then it and the orb reappeared, but big. And this time, you had hundreds of images just scrolling past in the orb, really fast, really flashy. And then it went black again. And then as the lights come up and the sound come up, Paramore were on stage and they started their set. Now from start to finish, we had high def visuals and VT mixtures uh, on the center screen and they look stunning. You couldn't, <laughs> it was definitely, definitely ultra high def. It's one of those lovely, lovely high def screens. And you had so much richness and color with the uh, graphics. And then uh, when they vision mixed the uh, live camera feed into it as well, it was nice and crisp and it was better than your best high def TV at home. It was stunning, stunning, stunning colours, stunning visuals. You couldn't ask for more for the money that they spent on that on that setup, I have to say. Then lighting wise, you didn't even have uh, the screen. The programming of the screen and the programming of the lights, the screen did not bleed out any of the lighting effects, so it was really, really arranged properly. They spent a lot of time pre-planning all the lighting and visuals to make sure that nothing bled each other out. And it was great, it was great when you have pure harmony between the VT and the uh, lighting. Now, with the lighting, the fixtures being basic and there's nothing wrong with being basic, it's just how you use it. Now they had a lot of LED uh, profiles, not many uh, LED strobe floods. They had a few of those at the back, lying in the back of the stage underneath the screen, pointing 45 degrees up and out. And they had a few LED trims on uh, LX1 and LX2. And that's all they needed. 
because the uh, position of the uh, lights on uh, the 45 degree trusses that are hanging off of LX1 and LX2 either side of the stage as well as having uh, the array of profiles on LX1, 2 and uh, front of house 1 that's all they needed and they uh, it was either a nice uh, tight narrow beam or even a um, few gobo breakups in there every song was different and the every song just morphed it from one bit into the next and there was no lightning effects repeated so the lightning engineer and designer knew exactly what they were doing and spent a long time designing this and it looked amazing visually stunning which complemented the uh, visually stunning screen definitely a great collaboration between both the uh, lighting engineer and the uh, AV engineer. Now, sound-wise, Paramore got just were just as uh, loud as that block party, and the sound clarity was just as crisp, 22 karat gold standard, as their basic. That was a high benchmark that they set, and it was an amazing mix from start to finish. You could hear absolutely everything on stage. In absolute detail, you could pick out you could pick out the instruments. But if you had your eyes closed, you could tell which uh, instruments were uh, were being played and where they were on stage from going left to right. That's how clear the mix was, and I love hearing a mix like that. It just sounds absolutely full-bodied, a lot of depth to it, and a lot of perfect audio and in harmony as well. It's fully in harmony with the uh, lyrics. Now, how was Paramore set? It was amazing. The last time I saw Paramore was five years ago in this very arena, when it was uh, when it was called the Motor Point Arena, and I've even got the uh, tour sticky to go in my collection from that as well. So, and comparing the two performances, from what I remember, every bit just as strong, every bit as amazing and Paramore just loved being on stage they loved being there with their fans and they definitely put the extra effort and they went the extra mile so anyone that was in the audience for being anything from being dragged there with their partners or being super fans they got value for money it was an amazing show very tight performance and you couldn't ask for a better performance. I mean, you really couldn't. Vocally stunning. Vo uh, and musically sound as well. The, the band were absolutely hot on the mark. Hot on the mark. And never missed a mark with the uh, songs. It was great to hear. Great show to see. The audience loved it. They were singing throughout. They were dancing throughout. They were cheering throughout. And after every song, you had a massive, massive round of applause and cheering as well. That is what I want to see when I'm at a live show. That is uh, how, that is the atmosphere I want to be in when I pay for a ticket to see a show. And that is what everyone in the arena got that night. Such a great, great performance from Paramore. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you like today's show, if you like today's show, please hit like, subscribe, and share. And we shall catch you next time. Bye for now.